Hey guys, Budcat7 here. Okay, it is Friday, April 10th, 2020, and I want to thank you for visiting the Stonewall Research Channel here on YouTube. I really do appreciate it. Alright guys, well, I hope everybody is doing as well as they can. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are having some difficulties and everybody's suffering from anxiety and depression and other things. So, I thought I might lighten it up a little bit and what I want to show you is basically something that very few people know about me. I used to have a YouTube channel dedicated to it, but some years back, I used to restore vintage bicycles and customize bicycles. I built a number of bicycles and what I like to do is show you the last customized bicycle that I built and I titled this video the most amazing customized bicycle ever built because pretty much that's what it is. and. If you don't know about it, and you might not, you know, want to say you're living under a rock or whatnot, but if you're not in certain parts of the country or other countries around the world, as a matter of fact, who are into this kind of thing, um, you might not know about it. It's certainly not very well <clears throat> appreciated or known on the east side of the country here on the east coast never really caught on all that much but let me take you through it a little bit and um, I'll tell you why I got into it a few years back and um, we'll talk about it a little bit and this way we keep it light I don't want to talk about anything serious um, in this video so let's just leave that alone and maybe you'll enjoy the video if you're into bikes or you know about customized bikes or you're not into customized bikes I think you're gonna get a kick out of it anyway but I don't have to tell anything to my brothers and sisters out there in the West like California and Texas and uh, New Mexico and Arizona and even in Chicago you know different areas of the country Florida somewhat too um, I don't have to tell them anything about it because they know all about it but if you're living in a section of the country where this is not happening then you probably wouldn't know about it now when I was a kid in the 60s I had a cool Schwinn bicycle. Now this is the era of the muscle bikes if you don't know and these type of bikes were considered muscle bikes and they were based on automobiles okay at the time a lot of uh, high powered automobiles were being produced what we know as the muscle cars you know that you could see and you know uh, antique auto shows and stuff like that but when I was a kid this was my bicycle more or less here I had the Schwinn 1968 Schwinn Stingray with the Ram's horn handlebars they had cool accessories for bikes at that time made by Schwinn and I had the Ram's horn handlebars. The only difference between this bike here and the bike I had was that I had the gold metal flake banana seat and I had a sissy bar on my bike. So I had a whole sissy bar on that. It's just a regular seat bar on the back of this bike here. But I had a sissy bar, gold banana seat, and gold um, hand grips, gold metallic hand grips on my bike. And I love my bike. My dad bought it for me. My dad was a guy who was into hot cars and sports cars and stuff like that, muscle cars. So were my uncles. They were heavily into cars and motorcycles, etc., etc. And naturally, so was I. So when I was a kid and when they were kids, anything with wheels you know was something that we were interested it didn't matter what it was skateboards scooters go-karts soapbox cars 
bicycles, mini bikes, motorcycles, you name it. We were always in that. And I've been working on motors since I was a little kid and working on bikes and mini bikes. You know, back in those days, in the 60s, you know, from area that I lived in anyway, we used to take bicycles apart, cut them apart, extend the forks, make choppers out of them, put motors on them, lawnmower engines with friction motors on them, and we did all kinds of things. We were heavily into our bikes, and we rode everywhere, and we did everything, so no self-respecting kid when I was a kid was without a cool bike. And, you know, then 10 speeds came out, which were kind of boring in that respect, but couldn't really do much with them. But with these bikes, the muscle bikes, you could do a lot with these bikes. And the error before, you see, these bikes, muscle bikes, were based on the automobile. That's why you had the stick shifter there. And they often had slick tires in the back, thicker, bigger, slick tires. And like the crate bikes here, it had the small front 20 inch tire on a Springer fork and that had an internal brake hub too which was very um, cool thing to have on a bike this just had caliper brakes on a Stingray and uh, front and rear caliper brakes uh, I'm not sure front and rear but yeah front and rear caliper brakes and what we call um, this sort of uh, derailleur type uh, gear set up on the back here but this was my bike when I was a kid and naturally being around my father and my uncles they were always reading the hot rod magazines and um, see in their time their bikes were similar to this kind of bike he's one of the bikes that I restored this is a J 1956 JC Higgins and I restored this bike and this, these bikes in the 50s were based on jet aircraft because at that time jet air, aircraft was something that was new. So every kid who had a bike, a Schwinn Phantom, the J.C. Higgins bike, many other bikes were based on aircraft. But then when it got to the 60s, everything turned to these muscle bikes. And so I hung around with my dad and my uncles, and they were always reading hot rod magazines all the time. So naturally, later on in life, I had my own rat rod, and it was very unique. I customized it myself, paint job, motor, everything. But I wanted to get back into bikes. But what was interesting when I was a kid, reading all the hot rod magazines about 40, 50 years ago, this suddenly came this sort of trend called low riders okay and we can thank our latino and latina brothers and sisters out there in california for bringing this sort of street rod genre to us it never caught on on the east coast and so there's a little bit of you know uh rivalry between the east coast hot rodders and the low rider but it's a completely different genre it's not the same thing it's just a different genre of street rod but when i was reading the hot rod magazines that my uncles and my father had back then i was looking at these low riders and i was like this is this is so cool and just the uh, talent and the imagination of the people who created these cars to me was just phenomenal and you see some of them here in these photos here I mean it's just absolutely amazing cars and as I said it never really caught on you see the kind of work that went into these cars it's just amazing stuff and so Never caught on here in the East Coast, and the guys in New York sort of lack that creativity, I think, you know. I mean, I love the street rods out here. They were all cool and everything, and some guys had custom paint jobs and stuff on their street rods, but nothing like the low riders out there in California. But as a kid, seeing these things, I, I got interested in them, but... What was interesting to me as a kid was often along with these pictures of the lowriders in Hot Rod magazines, there was always bicycles. 
and I was like, what's up with these bicycles, okay? And they were always based on those muscle bikes, like the Schwinn muscle bikes. Other manufacturers had muscle bikes too, but Schwinn was the most popular one. And I was seeing in these articles in the Hot Rod magazines, these bicycles, every time they were showing these low riders, and I was like, what's up with that? Later on, I sort of found out about it. Um, you know, it costs a lot of money to build these cars, so if you don't got the scratch to put in building a hot ride like this, the next best thing you could do is put it into your bicycle. So I was seeing these bicycles in these articles, and um, they were all tricked out, you know, so they had all kinds of things, three foot tall ape hangers, and a guy had like seven side view mirrors on one side of his handlebars, and another seven mirrors on the other, and I was just like, this is wild, I love this, and pretty soon it ca caught on and became like a, a major thing with bicycles and here you can see in these photos these low rider bicycles and some of them are just amazing and the kind of money that people put into these bikes is in the tens of thousands of dollars I mean some of them are just so unbelievable I mean look at this thing here I mean it's just a crazy stuff and a lot of these bikes have the, the wheels have like a hundred spokes on them and look at all this twisted metal on it and everything I mean they're just amazing looking things and you know there's a whole subculture of that mostly in the West like as I said it never really caught on out here and uh, you know there might be a little bit of ethnic you know stuff going on there or whatever but you know I didn't care about any of that stuff I just like cool bikes and some of these bikes are just outrageous and you can see a lot of them in Lowrider magazine he's an illustration of one but I was fascinated by these bikes oh, look at this one right here it's just holy cow Look what's going on in this thing. I mean, a bike like this, if you would have bike, it's got like a jet engine on the back. Most of these are human powered, though, you know, and that's what it's all about, human power. I'm sure now they have some electric ones or whatever, but unless you're living under a rock somewhere, this kind of thing is going on. And this spring and this summer in Venice Beach in California, on any given nice night, you're going to see thousands of bikes out on the street. And they look something like this. Okay. And this is a BBC, little piece done by BBC. We're in Venice, and California. The absolute, very best, on magical bikes. place on earth. And there'll be thousands of these bikes out on the street. See, when you're in Venice, like you high have to end lighting fit in kits. Some by guys doing your own thousands thing. of dollars if you can't on lighting paint, kits. So look at the if people you can't just walk glass, so much you have fun. to figure it out. And okay, so what we bring to Venice bikes. is the whole... So this one piece, this is about the electric uh, light parade that they have there, Venice Electric Light Parade, and you'll see the streets are full of these bikes. And as I said, you know, people will spend a lot of money on their lighting kits, etc., etc. on their bikes. You know, just a standard mountain bike that they tricked out. And look at this stuff. It's just so cool. So if you didn't know, and uh, you're living under a rock somewhere, this is the kind of thing that's going on around the country, and even in other countries around the world, like Indonesia, for instance, you know, they're heavily into low-rider bikes. I was friendly with a lot of those guys while I was building bikes and stuff. But let me show you my bike, and I've looked at many, many videos, pictures, magazines, all the kind of stuff, but I've never seen a bike quite like my bike and you know no disrespect to my brothers and sisters out there in California or elsewhere around the world but nothing compares to the bikes that I built and uh, I want to show you it and you know not only that for posterity you just have it here on YouTube in case anything happens to my 
pictures or anything like that. It'll be here on YouTube for posterity reasons. But let me show you my bike. And uh, I think you might get a kick out of it. And we need something like that right now. And I not only do, uh, you know, I want to give you guys a little bit of joy. But, you know, just for my own head too. To sort of revisit this thing. I don't do it anymore, unfortunately. But that's another sad, depressing story. But let me show you my bike, okay? This is the last bike that I built that I'm going to show you. And nothing else compares. I don't care what you got going on in Chicago or California or Texas or New Mexico or Arizona or Indonesia or anywhere like that. Nobody's ever created a bike like this. And I don't have it anymore. I actually had to dismantle it and put it in a crate. But let me show you my bike here. I think you're going to like it. Alright, let's take a little bit closer look at the thing here. And I'll tell you, for people who are building, and, you know, people who build cars, build bikes, when they saw my bike, you know, people used to stop on the street. I mean, the people, especially guys who are like 60 and 70, they used to stop on the street. Um, besides regular people, people used to give me money to get pictures on their, on my bikes. Um, I was in parades. Um, I... Uh, I did uh, anti-gordo shows. I mean, I brought my bike around everywhere. I was sort of like a minor celebrity in all the towns that I lived in and everything. And one day I'm down at the beach in Crab Meadow in Northport here in New York. And the president of the Vintage and Classic Hot Rod Association came down to the beach in his 64 and a half Mustang. And the guy who was with his wife and his daughter, he jumped out of his car, his convertible Mustang, he jumped out of the car, and he ran over to me with my bike, and he was like, this is so cool, it's unbelievable, blah, 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 blah. He was totally wowed by it, and he told me like this, he said, bro, if you could get this up, I'm hosting an event, an auto show, vintage auto show, um, for Wounded Warriors, and if you could get the bike up there, um, I think it would be the hit of the show. I really like it if you bring it up there. So I did. I rode my bicycle some 12 miles to the show that he was conducting there, and he was emceeing, and um, the bike was the hit of the show. I mean, it was all kinds of hot rods and cars and all kinds of stuff over there, but everybody really was focused on my bike because... It was the most outrageous thing they've ever seen. And it, and it is, still to this day, I've never seen anything quite like it. So let me show you my bike, my last bike here. And uh, this is a 24-inch, three-speed internal hub McCargy Beach Cruiser that I modified and it's got a lot of uh, vintage parts on it some rare vintage parts that nobody's ever seen you can't even get them anymore they're so rare but let's start at the top here because this is my whole setup here for my handlebars here and you can see here is actually my uh, dashboard lights here my steering section lights because at night time you know none of these things are lighted I had to see what was going on so I mounted this on top of my windshield it's just a cheap LED light but you know it suited my purposes for lighting up my steering section here which had a lot going on on it so you can see here, this is probably the only bike, bicycle, that I, and this is all human powered. There's no motor on this bike or anything. This bike weighs probably over 100 pounds. And um, <clears throat> this is a universal windshield that you can put on any sort of uh, motorcycle or motor scooter or whatever that you're building. So there's no reason why I couldn't apply it to a bicycle. And what you see here is actually a holder for an umbrella. I would have, you know, on a rainy day, we could put an umbrella mounted on this, uh, this mount right here. And what you see here 
in this steering section here first of all I have vintage handlebars here you can see by this round curved bar there's an extra bar in the front here which adds a little bit of style to the bike vintage handlebars this is a AM FM radio from the late 60s early 70s work perfect working brand new working condition Kyber, uh, carbon fiber cup holder you gotta have that to hold your drink right in here was a um, uh, little dashboard um, clock and uh, uh, thermometer here for automobiles but you know I can mount it on there it does no object to any of these things but the bike is a combination of new and old stuff you see my speedometer there that's a vintage speedometer a special type too it's not like a normal type and here are the um, brake lighting electronics, the brake light electronics and signal. This thing had brake light signals and had numerous brake lights on it as well. I'll talk about that a little bit. And uh, of course I had to have my uh, leather um, tassels there, handlebar tassels there. And also the uh, adjustable handlebar stem so you can adjust the height of the handlebars or how far out or how high they are is critical for me because all the stuff that I had mounted on the bike what you don't see here this is a Royce Union headlamp a rather large one with a horn built into it and on the front you can't see it here there are two vintage bicycle horns Royce Union bicycle horns and a police siren a vintage police siren all you know battery operated stuff there's tons of batteries so much weight and batteries on this bike and here you see a safety lights almost like you know a police cherry you know light and this also had interchangeable lenses but made for bicycles <clears throat> and there's part of the signal light and these signal lights also had LEDs in them they did all kinds of crazy things and uh, the front of the bike had a luggage rack on it that provided me a platform to mount all this stuff on and as you can see a twin note vintage bicycle horn here um, even the um, wheel reflectors were vintage lightning shaped um, reflectors you can see additional headlights on here and these headlights were generator headlights this bicycle had two generators on it my last bicycle the previous bicycle I built before this had three which I built my own bracket for the rear wheel here you can see the generator at the rear wheel here okay so not only does the bike have tons of lighting systems ground effects there's even lighting under the seat um, these are flag holders here there were two five flag five uh, five flag holders on either side of the bike a three flag holder in the front and these are vintage Bo Brummel nobody knows who Bo Brummel is a character from from literature and they're so extremely rare <clears throat> for balloon tire bicycles from the 40s and 50s I have a found a number of them brand new ones that I purchased a long time ago. it's so rare it's unbelievable and you can see additional headlamps that I built special brackets for to attach to the front of the bike and here you see some Delta lights which Delta made these uh, lighting accessories for boats and bicycles there's a red one on one side and a yellow one on one the other side and inside the bumpers were additional strip lighting LED lighting and all that kind of stuff <clears throat> and you can see the bicycle also has curb feelers on them I've never seen a bicycle with curb feelers I made my own brackets and mounted the curb feelers on the bike and later on I put uh, red and black dice um, curb feeler ends on the end of that and what you see here is vintage mud flaps with a jewel and there's jewels all over the bike vintage jewels that I had mounted all over the bike and uh, what you can see here is a PA horn mounted on a lower bar here and this PA horn also did the police siren firing siren ambulance siren 
and these springs here that you see with this chain and there's keys hanging off this chain <coughs> this is a homemade steering damper system that I made out of screen door springs that you can purchase at any hardware store and this system worked great it's attached on both sides of the steering forks here unlike a motorcycle steering damper, damper on a triple set on a top that's made by manufacturing this is my homemade one and it worked excellent excellent you can see some pinstriping on the fenders there what you don't see is my Elgin Bluebird fender light that's mounted. We'll see pictures of that later. But you can see all my wiring on there and I use some uh, <clears throat> netting on the front there to sort of help decorate the bike a little bit. And of course this is where my phone went over here and these saddlebags here. But you can see the wiring harness and I even, you know, paying attention to the detail you can see I used automotive tubing for the front wiring here. A lot of details on this bike. And people who build cars and bikes knew right away when they saw my bike how much work went into it. And I mean thousands of hours went of work went into this bike. It took me six months to build this bike. And down here you can see some repro person's vintage style pedals that I had on the bike. It's got a center stand. And here you see some of the low rider fake muffler system. You know, it's just a fake muffler that you put on your bike to imitate real mufflers, but there's one on either side. And then later on I put LED lighting in them. You can see the rear. Um, curved feelers on the bike here and just a little hint of the trailer hitch because this bike came with a trailer I'm telling you folks this bike had everything you can see the vintage crash bars on the back of the bike this type of bike unlike the older bikes couldn't accommodate front crash bars but I would have put front crash bars on there if I could have and these are Delta kinetic brake lights um, what it is is there's a little seesaw in there with a ball bearing and when you stop the ball bearing rolls forward on the seesaw making connection and then when you take off it rolls back and disconnects deactivates and you can see my generator there on this side of the wheel of course my saddle bags there right gotta have saddle bags on your bike and here's a vintage uh, faux chrome plated delta seat lamp that's all these are all vintage parts that I bought brand new in a box and I actually had a YouTube channel where I showed off my bikes and I showed people how to recondition some of these old parts and talked about them a little bit but I don't you know I stopped doing that because of my situation and here we see a vintage lighted safety wand here. This is 3M tape on the inside of this and it has a light that projects up through it and you can see it at night how nice it looks. And we have a repro vintage chrome um, Columbia luggage rack in the back and you can see all the LED lighting on a bike. Um, a lot of the control systems were underneath. It all worked independently, but lots of stuff on this bike. You can see some of the inside there of a rear bow brummer bumper that I put on the bike with some of the lighting in there. And again, the vintage mud flaps there, but that's not all on this bike. What you can't see on the other side is that I have a vintage license plate of bicycle license plates you see in the 50s and the 60s some jurisdictions cities towns required people to buy a license plate for their bike you know and you paid like two or three dollars and you got a license plate and you put it on your bike so I had several vintage license plates that I would interchange there once in a while and uh, I think you don't see, because I was probably working on it, the brake lighting systems in the back. There were actually twin brake lights and signaling systems on the back here. And we'll get to that in a second. Let me show you more pictures of the bike. 
Okay, so here I am at night with the bike, and even these pictures don't even do justice to the lighting systems on the bike. As again, I had uh, you know all sorts of lighting effects on my bike, and here I am. I used to dress up with very expensive clothes, and I'm wearing my uh, Air Jordan $300 Air Jordan sneakers here. And as I said, it doesn't even do justice to the light. I may not even have all the lights on the bike, but you can see some of the front here. These lights activated off the generator. So I had one generator on one side, one generator on the other side with tail lights, by the way. Okay. And you can see the front light. These are signal lights, but they did wacky things. The LEDs could be set to blink and flash and do all kinds of stuff. You can see my Elgin Bluebird fender light on there and some of the flags that were, you know, I could either put as many as I wanted to depending on what I was doing going out at night. But here I am down at the beach and, uh, you know, these bikes were such big hits. Wherever I went, I mean, you know, put it, here, put it this way. If I was on the West Coast, everybody would get it. But here on the East Coast, like 50% of the people were just floored by the bike. Again, people used to stop me. They used to offer to buy the bike. And I would tell them, you don't have enough money to buy this bike, pal. And um, they would hand me money so they could get pictures on it with their family and kids and all this kind of stuff. So it was a great deal of joy that I brought to the world with my bikes but again on the east coast here only half of the people got it and it was like 30% of the people just didn't acknowledge it at all which I found kind of strange you could just walk past the bike without taking a look at it and then a certain amount of people just didn't get it at all they just didn't understand it at all so Unlike the other areas of the country, I mean, if I, my, my intentions were, were to move out to the West Coast and hook up with my fellow brothers and sisters who were into the low riders and beach cruises, and that was the next phenomena that happened. I forgot to mention that. You see, people got into beach cruisers. That was, I don't have it up right now, but beach cruisers was the next level and that happened in the past 10 to 20 years so we became beach we went from low riders to beach cruisers there's still separate genres of bike but this is more in the beach cruiser bike genre and here's another picture of my bike you see more of the front of it here and i'm here in northport harbor here and you see the bike here's the siren with the two horns in the front my uh big headlamp, Royce Union headlamp, which had a built-in horn in it too. This thing had so many horns and sirens. And you see my Elgin Bluebird fender light there with my other vintage lights that I built separate back brackets for and all kinds of LED lighting systems on it. And these are actually asphalt draggers. This is from the hot rod genre. You know, you'll see old cars with these asphalt, leather asphalt draggers on it. These ones are actually pet collars that I put on the crash bars in the back. LED pet collars as asphalt draggers. And here you see a little kitty cat head from the hot rods. His tongue moves in his mouth. When you go right, it goes right. When you go left, it goes left. A lot of hot rodders new and you can see the brake lighting systems and signal lighting systems in the back you know I could signal brake just like anything and of course I had the kinetic Delta kinetic lights in there too and a lot of these bags and things house some of the switching and stuff for the electric lights and you can see my homemade uh, steering damper because when you got a heavy front end on a, a bike like this you need a steering damper and I and like I said my homemade system was just worked perfectly perfectly and you can see the front of the bike here with the three flag holder and on the front here I had interchangeable the steers head which was an LED light made for bikes which did all kinds of things and also projected a uh, laser lane on the ground there safety lane projected laser on the ground so when the bike was all lit up it was like super crazy even the valve caps had uh, you know motion activated lighting on them and uh, 
this is basically the front end of the bike. It's just the bike was amazing. It's just so much stuff going on in this bike. It's just incredible. Of course, I had the <clears throat> comfy seat with the back on it. You know, very comfortable riding around with the seat with the back on it. You know, these bikes were never meant to be ridden fast. They're not like racing bikes. You know, I called them years ago. I coined the phrase comfort bikes. They use it a lot now, but I think I was one of the first people to even mention comfort bikes, but it's a good picture of the bike here, and it's just amazing bike. This was actually part of what you see here. This was part of a um, shelving, steel shelving system, and I used this part and I inserted LED lamps, bicycle lamps in there. They also glowed at night. But to show you the piece de resistance here, here's the bike with my trailer attached to it. And the trailer was no less amazing than anything. And by the way, the license plate on the bike, on the rear of the bike, I adapted. Well, let's go back one picture here. And I'll show you for anybody who's interested. But, okay. Why are you messing me up here? All right. You can't see it that well. It's too bad I don't have a picture of the rear of the bike, but you'll see the bicycle license plate right here, and it's on a motorcycle bracket that I adapted for the hub on the rear of the bike here. He's, this was a three-speed internal shifter and uh, I put a Cherry which was uh, rear light for a generator system as a illuminator for the plate. So the plate was illuminated while I was riding. You see the generator on the other side. In a place it was never meant to be mounted, but that was no object for me. I don't care what this. Oh, you can't do this and you can't do that. Well, watch me. Watch how I do it. But the plate was illuminated while I was riding. And of course, these front lights also illuminated while I was riding so I had this incredible front lighting system on the bike but as far as the trailer goes the whole trailer was tricked out too with lighting system I had easy couplings just like any trailer on any car and it was had LED lighting on the wheel etc etc and also ground effects Right, uh, lighting underneath the chassis of the cha trailer here and this trailer also had brake lights it had an electric piston activated brake lights attached to my front caliber which I ran the wiring all the way back and that electric piston also ran these other brake lights on my bike so it ran these electric piston style, so the trailer had brake lights that worked in tandem with all the rest of the brake lights on the bike. But what you don't see here is that I had a trailer license plate, a miniature trailer license from like Iowa, something like that, from 1977 or whatever year it was. And I had a plate bracket that I made mounted on the back of the bike, and that also had a cherry, it had an illuminator illuminating light which worked off the generator on the left side here so this also the plate was illuminated while I was riding and inside the bed of the trailer I put um, rubber diamond plating in there and also uh, a uh, mount for a Bluetooth speaker a sound activated lighted um, Bluetooth speaker so I could run it from my phone up here and I was always blasting tunes. It was a real loud speaker too so I was always blasting tunes and whatnot and the rear of the trailer had netting on the back. I had removed the rear trailer um, gate and put um, netting similar to that I had on the front of the bike here so this bike was completely tricked out and again this just you know it do, these pictures don't even do it justice you see the lighted safety wand there 
okay another vintage park there so it, these pictures don't even do the bike justice and I mean just people would stop they would come down to the beach and would just stop get out of their cars and look over my bike and when I had my other bikes in different towns, it would be the same thing. I mean, this bike was just the most incredible bike that you can ever imagine. And I've never seen anything. You know, again, I apologize to all my brothers and sisters around the country and around the world. Not trying to outdo anybody or anything. But, you know, I just created this bike for my pleasure and to bring joy to a lot of people. And it certainly did. You know, I love being out with the bikes. I like the attention, and I love the fact that people enjoyed it. And the people have so many pictures and videos. I don't even have as many pictures and videos. Uh, one guy wanted it was a musician. He wanted he you know, was a professional musician. He wanted to showcase my bike and his music videos and all this kind of stuff. So this is my hidden talent that nobody knows about and as I said this is the last one I created I created several others and my YouTube page is still up but I don't go there because it's depressing for me but you can see a picture of my one of my other bikes on that page that one had like a crush ruler seat and that was a 26 inch wheel this is a 24 inch a little better for a short guy like me but this bike was incredible. Oh, you can see the lasers from the ran the uh, steer head. I had the red one on this time, and you can see the laser lighting on the ground. It's just total cover with ground effect lights everywhere and whatnot. I'll show you a couple more pictures of the bike, but it was an amazing bike. As I said, you know, situation changed in my life. It's rather depressing, and I don't want to talk about it, but just check out the rest of the pictures of my bike here I have a few but you can see some of my vintage parts there and oh boy here we go here's me down in Northport Harbor by the lobstermen by the lobster traps and it's just you know I brought my bike out a lot to show and I drove it on the road. I had brake light signaling, license plates. So it was almost like a real vehicle. I drove in regular traffic and went on. It's all human power, folks. No motors, no batteries, no electric motor, no nothing. And this bike weighed like over 100 pounds. And as I said, you know for a few years there while I was building and creating and restoring these bikes I really had a good time doing it and I mean half the fun is building the bike itself and I had planned to spend the rest of my life doing this and maybe doing it professionally I had so many people were like can you build me a bike like that can you build me and I certainly could but the system fixed me and uh, my family sold me out and threw me under a bus and that's why I'm not doing it today and that's why I'm not out in California right it's a silly picture of me and my bike out there at Crab Meadow Beach and here's me anyway guys I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the pictures there of my bike I just wanted to lighten it up and get off all this serious stuff and maybe brought a little bit of joy to people while all this terrible stuff is going on and think about my bike there and uh, your friend Bud Cat 7 bringing joy to a lot of people I'll never forget one of my bikes I was living in a town and I used to you know every night I could get it out I would take it out, take it to the local park, and just set it up by the street. And, you know, naturally all the passers-by would, you know, admire it and everything. And one time, uh, a Marine motorcycle club was at one of the local bars. There's maybe like a hundred Marines, a hundred bikes there. All these Marines motorcycle club. And I was riding around the avenue there and every time I would pass by they were like hey come here we want to see your bike we want to see your bike so as I was riding around one time one of the 
women came up to me. One of these girls who was part of the motorcycle club came up to me and said, Hey, can I ride your bike? I'll let you ride my motorcycle. So I said to her, I said, well, what did you do to your motorcycle? Did you rebuild the motor? Did you trick it out? Did you paint the frame? Did you chop it out? What did you do to your bike? Did you do anything to your bike? She said, well, no, I didn't do anything to my bike. I said, well, then you can't ride my bike. And then I had like a hundred Marines, angry Marines who wanted to beat me up after that. <laughs> and, you know, I rode around a couple more times. And finally, I stopped in the front of the bar and I said like this. I said, nobody can ride my bike for obvious reasons. Okay, guys. I said, but if you want to get a picture on it and everything, be my guest. And they proceeded to get all kinds of pictures on it and everybody had a good time and everything. But I had a lot of fun with my bikes in the past. I wish I was doing it right now. But again, I think there were jealous people in my own family and they didn't want me to have a life like this. But who knows, maybe if I win the lottery or something like that, I can go back to doing it. But I certainly had a lot of talent at it and I've never seen another bike like it, ever. I mean, I've seen a lot of cool bikes. There's a lot of cool bikes out there, but nothing like this, folks. Nothing. You'll never see another bike like this ever again. But your friend Budcat7 built them. And my thing about it was it brought joy to a lot of people, a lot of old timers, a lot of young kids, you know kids would walk by with their parents and while their parents were walking down the street the kids never took their eyes off these bikes they loved them all right guys well i hope you enjoyed that please do hit the like button if you kindly would and i am doing research on the giants we'll get back to that real soon but i thought this was an appropriate time to showcase my hidden talents here and uh I'll be back with a new video for you real soon. Okay, guys. Anyway, Budcat7 signing out. Peace.